Hey everyone, it's Bill here. If you're anything like me, you've probably heard whispers or maybe loud conversations about stem cells as a therapy and a game changer in stroke recovery. And if you've already done all the usual stuff, rehab, diet changes, supplements, mindset work, and you're still feeling stuck, it makes sense that you'd start looking at everything else out there, including stem cells. So today I want to unpack this for you in plain English. I've been asked by many people what my thoughts are on stem cells. So today we're going to do the what, why, how, where, what if, and even the why not of stem cell therapy. My goal isn't to sell you anything, maybe, except my book, The Unexpected Way That a Stroke Became the Best Thing That Happened, 10 Tools for Recovery and Personal Transformation. Uh, it's available on Amazon uh, by typing my name into the search bar, and it's also available at recoveryafterstroke.com slash book. But what I really want to do is give you the clearest, most honest picture I can about stem cells. So stem cells are unique because they are the type of cell that has the remarkable ability to transform into many different cell types in the body, including brain cells, muscle cells, and blood vessels. This regenerative potential is what makes them so exciting in the context of stroke recovery. The hope is that stem cells could one day help repair or even replace areas of the brain that were damaged during stroke. Researchers are currently exploring several types of stem cells for this purpose. These include, and I'm going to get this totally wrong, mesenchymal stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, which are typically harvested from bone marrow or fat tissue, neural stem cells, which have the potential to become various types of brain cells, umbilical cord stem cells, which are rich in growth and repair factors, and induced pluripotent stem cells, which are adult stem cells reprogrammed to behave like embryonic stem cells, offering a customizable and ethical source of potential therapies. So think of stem cells like blank Lego bricks. They can be shaped into many different structures, brain cells, muscles, blood vessels, and depending on what your body needs, they can be uh, created to go into those spaces as well. In stroke recovery, the hope is that these bricks could help rebuild the damaged architecture of the brain, but they still need a skilled builder, your brain's healing system, the right blueprint, which is the targeted therapy, and a stable foundation, nutrition, rest, and support. So after a stroke, brain cells die. Most conventional medicine can't bring those brain cells. Rehab helps the remaining areas of the brain adapt, but doesn't regenerate what was lost. Stem cells might help in several important ways during stroke recovery because they have the potential to reduce inflammation in the brain, promote the growth of new blood vessels, a process known as angiogenesis, and encourage the brain to form new neuronal connections, supporting neuroplasticity. In some cases, they may even help replace cells that were damaged or lost due to the stroke, offering the possibility of true tissue repair rather than just compensatory support. The delivery methods for stem cell therapy vary depending on the study or the clinic offering the uh, procedure. The most common and the least invasive approach is intravenous infusion, where stem cells are delivered through the bloodstream, a method frequently used in early phase clinical trials. So you may have seen it before in movies or in person when you're at the hospital. The bag, it has the stem cell uh, liquid in the bag. It's connected to a tube that runs into your arm and slowly they drip into the bloodstream and they, are ac and they access the body like that or they enter the body like that. Another option is intracerebral injection, where the cells are injected directly into the brain near the damaged area. While more invasive, this technique aims to deliver the cells precisely where they are needed most. 
The third method involves spinal or cervical injections similar to those used in perispinal atanasept therapy, which, while not a stem cell treatment, is often discussed in the same recovery context due to its neurological focus. These approaches are still largely experimental and typically only available in clinical trials or select research centers. Stem cell therapy is being tested in clinical trials around the world, in the US, Europe, Asia, and Australia. There are some private clinics also in other countries like Mexico and Panama and India, often outside the oversight of regulatory bodies. One of the most rigorously designed studies to date is the RESTORE trial, short for Regenerative Stem Cell Therapy for Stroke in Europe. This multi-center, randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled trial was conducted across nine French stroke centers. It focused on evaluating the safety and efficacy of intravenous infusion, allergenic and deposed derived mesenchymal stem cells in stroke recovery. Man, that is such a mouthful. And I do hope that you're able to uh, keep up. I'm barely able to keep up with all of this stuff. And honestly, if it wasn't for ChatGPT helping me put this together, I would be struggling. I would need stem cells to help me create that part of the brain to keep it going. Now, that being said, I'll keep going as well. The treatment was administered within 10 days of stroke onset with participants monitored over a two-year period. The primary outcome was improvement in motor function measured using the NIH stroke scale. Secondary outcomes assessed a broader range of recovery indicators including cognitive fatigue, cognitive function, performance in daily living activities, and imaging biomarkers. As of the latest reporting, final results had not yet been published, but the trial sets a gold standard for evaluating stem cell therapy in a stroke recovery context. If you're considering international treatment, it's essential to ask the right questions to ensure safety and legitimacy. Start by checking whether the clinic is participating or publishing peer-reviewed research, which adds credibility to their approach. Ask what kind of aftercare they provide because recovery doesn't end with the procedure and ongoing support is crucial. Finally, assess how transparent they are about their results. Uh, a reputable clinic should be open about both successes and limitations, offering clear data rather than vague promises. Stem cell therapy isn't a quick fix. Research like Restore helps us understand What's real and what's just hype? What if it works? In early phase trials, some stroke survivors have reported encouraging outcomes such as improved walking, enhanced speech and coordination, reduced fatigue and brain fog, and overall better quality of life. While these results are promising, it's important to understand that stem cell therapy does not replace the need for rehabilitation. Instead, it may create more supportive environment in the brain like enriching the soil before planting to help foster new growth, healing, and functional recovery. There are inspiring cases of people improving months or even years after the stroke, but it's not a guarantee for everyone. What's the catch? So if stem cell therapy sounds so promising, why isn't it already standard practice? Well, the answer lies in several key challenges. First, the data is still limited. And while some studies show encouraging results, others remain inconclusive and more large-scale trials are needed. Second, the cost can be prohibitive and many private clinics charging tens of thousands of dollars out of pocket. Third, regulatory standards vary widely between countries, which means the quality and safety of treatments can differ significantly. There are also risks to consider particularly with injections into or near the brain, which require careful oversight. Lastly, emotional vulnerability can play a role. Where people are desperate for healing, it can cloud judgment and make them more susceptible to unrealistic claims. This is exactly why well-designed trials like Restore are so important. 
as they help distinguish genuine scientific progress from mere speculation. Stem cell therapy might well become a key part of future stroke recovery. While the research is still unfolding, there's enough early evidence and growing interest to keep it firmly on the radar for those exploring every possible path to healing. But it's important to remember stem cells are a tool, not a magic cure. And like any tool, they work best when combined with fundamentals of recovery. That means continuing with good rehabilitation, maintaining proper nutrition, getting quality sleep, having emotional support, and staying persistent through the ups and downs. If you're considering this path, here are three smart first steps. Search for active clinical trials in your region on clinicaltrials.gov. Ask your doctor these questions. Is there any clinical data behind this? What's the risk profile? Is it supervised by a regulated body? Connect with others who have tried it. Peer experience won't replace evidence, but it can offer insight into what the journey feels like. So to close, this isn't about chasing miracles. It's about staying open and informed and hopeful. You're not alone. Recovery is still in motion and science is still learning because people like you keep asking the most powerful question in healing, what else is possible?